A major star returns on AEW Collision. A huge match has been announced for AEW Wrestle Dream. An AEW star signs a new multi-year deal. And WWE Hall of Famer Hacksaw Jim Duggan undergoes emergency surgery. Hello and welcome to the Solo Sunday News here. Myself, Andrew Parda, at What Culture Wrestling. I hope you're well. I apologize if my voice sounds a little bit raspy. I blame it on the football yesterday. Come on, the town. Uh, anyway, it's a slow but steady one here on the news front. So I will get into our first story. And it's Jade Cargill. Yes, Jade Cargill returns to AEW on last night's collision. Uh, this is a Jade who's not been seen since Double or Nothing this past May, where she lost the TBS title to Chris Statlander. And that was Statlander herself who was returning on that night from injury. Uh, and here on Collision, it was Stat defending that title against Robin Renegade, uh, which obviously successfully defending that title against Robin Renegade. Then post-match, Robin and her twin sister Charlotte uh, attacked Stat, and that's where Jade returned and made the save. Before then, laying out Statlander with the Jaded. So clearly, we are going to be getting a rematch somewhere down the line. Maybe Wrestle Dream, maybe Grand Slam, maybe Grand Slam Dynamite, maybe Grand Slam Rampage. Uh, it looks like uh, Jay Cargill is back, means business, and has the TBS title once again in her sights. Uh, so yeah, it's cool to see Jade back. Uh, there's there's a, a lot of upsides to Jay Cargill. There's been a lot of upsides to Chris Statlander uh, since she won the TBS championship. Uh, I believe that was her ninth successful title defense. Uh, Stats just great, man. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing this one again. Um, and sign me up even more so for Wrestle Dream, where we will see Brian Danielson versus Zack Sabre Jr. Yes, this is a match that has now been made official. This comes hot on the heels of last night again on Collision of Danielson, uh, basically just as he put it, was it firing his shot for the 1st of October, Seattle, Washington, and he won Zack Sabre Jr. Now, that is a match that I'm sure a lot of people will be looking forward to. I very much am looking forward to this. Uh, now, it, it isn't the first time that Zack Sabre Jr. and Brian Danielson have locked up. Uh, they last wrestled in 2009 for WXW, which is where uh, Zack Sabre Jr. was successful. The year prior to that, they had a match in Coventry in England, which is where Brian Danielson won. So this will be the third singles match between the to, uh, but as mentioned, they've not wrestled since 2009. So that's a, a fair old while. Uh, and this was also a match that was supposed to happen at the first Forbidden Door event, but that was when Danielson got injured. Uh, Claudio Castagnoli was his replacement, making his debut for AEW and uh, picking up a win over, over Zach as well. So this is a match that has my attention. Uh, Wrestle Dream as a show is, is intended to be a tribute to Antonio Inoki. Um, I mean, <laughs> in terms of paying tribute to somebody, if you want to put on the, the best possible match, then you, you're doing well by putting Brian Danielson up against Zack Sabre Jr. There are two ingredients there that can make for a fantastic recipe and a fantastic dish. Uh, now, this is the first uh, only matching out so far for Wrestle Dream. But as mentioned, it's the 1st of October. So there's still a couple of weeks or well, three weeks today will be Wrestle Dream. It's a Sunday pay-per-view. Uh, and I'm intrigued to see what other matches we get on there uh, and what other New Japan uh, talent will be involved. Because, I mean, if you're starting things off with Danielson and Zack Sabre Jr., you're very much starting things off on the right foot. Uh, and... Uh, just sticking with AEW, it's a very AEW heavy news day today. Uh, like I said, it's a very slow but steady news day. Um, and uh, this one involves Prince Nana. Now, Prince Nana, as per Fightful Select, has signed a new multi-year deal with AEW. Um, this deal is said to have been signed in the past month or so uh, and comes on the back of, uh, of Nana impressing management, impressing uh, members of the roster, clearly making a good impression as the head of the Mogul Embassy Affiliates, as they're known as these days, which is Swerve Strickland, which is Brian Cage, and which is the Gates of of agony of course Kate's uh, cage and the gates of agony the roh six-man champions as well so yeah prince nana is somebody who is always makes for an entertaining presence on tv i always find that it's one of those managers where it's like yeah he's, he's good he gets it he's, he's really good at what he does uh, and it's great to see him getting more and more of a spotlight of course working ring of honor shows working aw shows uh, and prince nana is somebody that goes back his history with ring of honor goes back to the very early days of ring of honor uh, i think it literally the beginning of ring of honor then he formed the first uh iteration of the embassy in what 2004 i think it would be and there's just been so many people he's he's managed over the years i mean we've got alex shelley uh tomato champa mia yim uh dominic dijakovic or dijak uh necro butcher it's claudio castagnoli there's just like a, a wide range xavier the, the second ever ring of honor world champion uh yeah, just so many different people that have been under the stewardship of prince nana uh, and he's gonna be sticking around in aw for the foreseeable future as i said this this report from fightful says it's a multi-year deal no specifics on exactly how many years i mean aw tends to throw out three-year deals but they they offered longer deals than that it could just be a two-year deal but it's a multi-year deal prince nana is going nowhere and i'm cool with that 
that. I mean, he's been with AEW since what Death Before Dishonor last year, 2022, uh, where he uh, he purchased what, what was it called? Uh, Tully Blanchard Enterprises. Yeah, he bought that off Tully, which was basically, from what I remember, I don't know if we've seen Tully on on our screen since. Uh, but yes, Prince Lana is here to stay in AEW. Uh, I'm moving on to one final story here. Um, Hacksaw Jim Duggan over the weekend has been hospitalised and has undergone emergency surgery. Uh, all the love in the world for the Hacksaw. Um, I, I, I always I, one of the great wrestling. The wrestling fandoms a weird place at the, at most of the time, where it just it's it just goes a bit crazy. And but one of the big positives of pro wrestling over the last couple of years is if you you pop on social media and you see Hacksaw Jim Duggan with his wife Deborah, and they're just flying somewhere around the world, living their best life. It's it's just it's one of those things where you just scroll and it's like, oh man, that's good. Hacksaw's living the dream. Um, now it was his wife Deborah who took to uh, to Hacksaw's Facebook page over the weekend. Um, here we go. I've got a quote here. Uh, we want to thank everyone that came out yesterday as Jim was honoured by the Glens Falls Firefighters Association and apologies to those that came after 3.30. Jim has stayed to the hospital and admitted yesterday evening he had emergency surgery this morning, so that would be Saturday morning, uh, and everything went well. Uh, we will reschedule tomorrow in Utica, Michigan for a later time. We welcome your prayers as we continue to provide updates. Thank you, Deborah. Um, so, yeah, um, like I said, nothing but positive vibes for Hacksaw. Just uh, what, what, what the character, what a, I have had the pleasure of meeting him as well. Just what, what a lovely, lovely fella. Um, now, as kind of touched upon there by Deborah. Uh, on was it Friday or Thursday? Hacksaw was inducted into the Glens Falls Firefighters Association as an honorary member um, due to his work uh, during the seventies, working as a volunteer firefighter. Uh, it was also the, a charity raise. What was it? GF Nation Fund raised two and a half thousand dollars as well as part of this. And the eighth of September was officially made James Hacksaw Duggan Day. So yeah, it's been been quite the, uh, the celebration of Hacksaw these these last few days, and uh, hopefully it's a, a swift recovery for him. And again, nothing but love for Hacksaw. Uh, well. What a, what a man, what a dude. Right, let's wrap things up with a couple of questions. Dustin Sentinel's got in touch. Uh, oh, fantastic picture of a pooch. As ever on a Sunday, send me. I'll be here for a while carrying on working for the day. So send me your pitch to your pets. I do always appreciate them. They do always put a smile on his face. Uh, so Dustin Sentinel's got in touch. Hello, Andrew. Uh, do you think anyone could take CM Punk's spot in terms of a ratings draw? Collision was kind of made for him to be kept separate from the elite. It very much was kind of made for him to be kept separate from the elite. Um, just people didn't have factor in. They're also Jack Perry. <laughs> it's like, so it just got to the point where how many people are we going to have to keep away from uh, from Crazy Phil? And I, I am a, a massive CM Punk mark, but so I'm saying that half in jest. Uh, yeah, in terms of who could take over as a ratings draw, um, I, if you talk about Collision specifically, I mean, Collision itself is is the show a saturday night show is not going to draw as many as much well as do as well in the ratings as a, a show on a wednesday or even on a friday really uh you're in a tough spot on a saturday night people not, a lot of people don't like to just sit in and watch professional wrestling on a saturday night a lot of people like to go out they like to do things um there's other you've got competition from sports as well uh, so it's uh, i think whoever is at the top of collision nobody's going to be a massive ratings draw in that regard now you take away the other factors of, of you know competition and the, the fact that it's on a Saturday night, um, and CM Punk will, will draw ratings as good as anybody would in that company. Um, in terms of who could replace him, I mean, it looks like Brian Danielson's going to be the one, um, which is that's that's fine by me. I don't think I, I absolutely love Brian Danielson, one of the greatest wrestlers of all time. I don't think he's quite the draw as CM Punk, especially on a mainstream level. CM Punk just has a, a little bit more star power in terms of a wider audience. I'm not saying Brian that he's better than Brian. I'm not saying that Brian sucks. I just said Brian Danielson, one of the greatest of all time. I just think in terms of ratings, Punk slightly edges it. But nobody's going to be bringing in massive ratings on a Saturday night uh, is what it comes down to. So hopefully that answers that question. Uh, I mean, you can get there with someone like Switchblade Jay White if you take your time and you position him well, which is what they have been doing that, to be fair, since Collision launched. Uh, right, next question. Uh, Kevin Randall's got in touch. Hey, Kevin, how the Sunday solo champion? I will take that. Uh, do you think it would benefit... Uh, where are we? Do you think it would benefit to create true divisions for each of the titles? Watching Mark's face cruise away just hasn't been great for me. Looking forward to Welcome to Wrexham Series 2. Yes, Welcome to Wrexham Series 2 launches on Wednesday. Uh, I am doing a little something for that. Um, that's about all I can say at the moment on that. But yes, uh, I'm looking forward to that. But as for uh, creating divisions in terms of if you're... Because, th uh, I mean, what would the divisions be uh, realistically? I mean, obviously you've got the, the, the men's and the, and the women's divisions. But then 
because th there isn't a, a cruiserweight title there isn't a, a light heavyweight title in, in the company at the moment so then would you have to introduce a cruiserweight title so that then you can make a cruiserweight division and if so absolutely not because the last thing AEW needs right now is more championship belts um could, could you make a, an international division uh, what what would be the, the, the what, what would that make up what would be the What's the word I'm looking for? The perimeters for that. How would you qualify to be part of the international division? What would you need? What boxes would you need to tick? Would it be you know solely international talent? Um, and then again, you you look at the. I, I just I don't know how you can break things up in terms of th this person's only going for the TNT title or these people can only compete for the TBS title. And then when do you, do you get to a point where people move on from one belt to another belt? So I I don't know in terms of. Uh, weight divisions, I, I can, I could take it or leave it. I mean, you, you look at, it all depends on the talent involved. I, I get the thing that some people might, if it's a, a smaller cruiserweight saying you've got a big bruiser like John Moxley, and it's just you know it's going to be a quick five six minute squash match, you could do that so many times. But just because some of these smaller in stature doesn't mean they can't be in a world title picture. Rey Mysterio will be the classic example, uh, absolutely. Brian Danielson has shown that, or as his time as Daniel Bryan in WWE. Uh, so, I don't think a weight division should re would really do much for AEW, and I don't think there's any real need for it. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know that one. Right, uh, one last question. Mark Solid got in touch. Oh, what a fantastic photo there. Apollo and one of his pals. Thank you for sending that in, Mark. Uh, more than Andrew, thoughts on what should be the next singles for you for Jay White? I think he should get a title. Maybe Golden Elite versus BCC. Hashtag, this is the news. If you do Golden Elite versus BCC... Um, I mean, that, that's that's an option, but I'm thinking, where does Jay White come in there? I, I don't know, unless you mean in Golden Elite versus Bullet Club Gold, or you mean in Bullet Club Gold versus BCC. Uh, I, I don't know. That. I, I, I don't know, because, I mean, prior to <laughs> prior to, uh, to CM Punk going scorched to Earth at Wembley, it was very much felt like, there was that hard, well, not a hard brand split, but there was a loose brand split between Collision on a Saturday and then Dynamite on a Wednesday. And Jay White very much felt part of the, the Saturday club and the Elite felt, obviously, were very much part of the Wednesday club. And in that case, it's like, well, you, can you, I mean, you, obviously, you can get to rivalries across, across brands. Uh, but because I'm just kind of thinking to myself, Kenny Omega uh, and Jay White, I think that that is always something fun uh but for me in particular i would love to see a uh, a prolonged rivalry between switchblade Roy that's easy for me to say on a sunday switchblade jay white and the american dragon brian Danielson. obviously once once brian's done with ricky starks um and i'm happy to see that kind of carry on as well because hey big ricky starks fan big brian Danielson fan so yeah i'd like to see something with uh, jay white and uh and danielson at some point down the line it doesn't have to be today it doesn't have to be next week it doesn't have to be next month uh if that's something you look at maybe for the end of the year or the start of next year i am very i would be very happy to see that other options for jay white i mean you're looking at there's such a a, a, a strange line with aw in terms of baby faces and heels i know at one point that the company mantra was like oh you know it's all bits of gray you can choose who you want to boo and who you want to cheer which i get that and i can understand that and i can appreciate that but sometimes you need you know you need to find heels and baby faces uh to me and so when you look at jay white is a heel but you look at the baby face options to, to face him i mean there is brian danielson is he a baby face he, he came to the rescue of ricky the dragon steamboat that's a pretty darn baby face thing to do but then he is part of the blackpool combat club who are technically heels uh but are they because then some people cheer him so i yeah in terms of looking for a proper baby face for jay white i mean th there is kenny um just not Jericho. I, I, I've been a long time Jericho-holic, but just please keep him away from Switchblade JY. As to whether Jericho was a heel or a babyface, who the fudge knows on that one? Because he he kind of, he, he turned babyface, kind of, but turned a heel. It was kind of all strange. He was a heel, then he aligned himself with another heel in Don Callis. But then because Don Callis had a painting of Jericho's head, Jericho became a de facto babyface purely because basically another heel turned on him, which just is always a stupid way of doing things. And then Jericho was kind of the babyface, but he went to Wembley Stadium against Will Ospreay, who was clearly the hometown hero, the hometown hero and babyface. Uh, yeah, so I just, yeah, uh, long, I'm just going to go, go back right to the beginning. Jay White, Brian Danielson, they're done. That is the solo Sunday news here at What Culture Wrestling with myself, Andrew Pollard. I'm off to write ups and downs for Collision. 
uh, which will be on the website shortly. Uh, Sarah Miller will be with the uh, the Ups and Downs Collision video tomorrow. But yes, have a great day, whatever you are doing with that. I'm off. Get some more coffee down me, and I'll catch you in a week's time.